Elevation 10,000. Flying blind. Speed 96. Okay, Marconi? Weather report from here to Deerfield. Clear. Feeling at 6,000 or higher. Visibility 10 miles to unlimited. You'd better set her down at Deerfield. What's payday? Hey, listen, Marconi. I can fly this cup through a haystack and come out with a needle. I'm coming in. Hello, Mr. Eldon. Yes? Lewis just reported he's heading through a storm. I told him to set the plane down at Deerfield, and he laughed at me. He'll come through all right. Well, what do you say, Mr. Holden? Do I get the loan? I'm oh, sorry, Barry. It's impossible. I don't consider it a good business risk. Good business risk? Well, do you think I'd have put my last dollar into that new ship if I felt like that? And with five or six more like it, we'd be the best investment in the country. Barry, you're young and ambitious, but I can't lend money on enthusiasm. But it's enthusiasm based on facts. Druin of Consolidated Airlines offered to buy me out. I refused. He's been trying to reach me ever since. Then why don't you sell out? No one ever went broke taking a small profit. That's just it. I'm not after a small profit. Consolidated has the passenger business corner, but that doesn't pay for gas. We built the mail business from nothing into something they're afraid of. We're real competition now and getting stronger every day. Consolidated needs that mail business. They want that new mail contract, and they don't want us bidding against them. Of course not. You're forcing them to lower their bid. Sure, we underbid them once and we can do it again. We'll get a renewal of that new mail contract no matter how much we have to cut our figures. But if you do that, how are you going to repay borrowed money? <laughs> no, Barry. No, I think your reasoning's all wrong. I told you before, Mr. Eldon is busy. Famous newspaper man admits defeat at hands of beautiful Stanna. Oh, no, you don't. Mona, your phone is ringing. Mm-hmm. Let's answer it. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Druin. I'm very sorry, but Mr. Eldon is still tied up. Yes, I will. Say, His Highness Martin Druin of Consolidated is calling up Barry Eldon, and he's too busy to talk? Come on. Give us the lowdown. Is Barry selling out or not? What's your guess? Oh, come on, Tiny. Clear out of here. I told you Mr. Eldon was in conference and he's too busy to see you. You're cuckoo. Barry's never too busy to see me. Why, he and I are just like that. I would suggest you sell out to consolidate your safest bet. I can't do that, Mr. Holden. Even if I want to do it, it wouldn't be fair to the boys who've helped me build this business. They've given their efforts for practically nothing. And why don't you ask them how they feel about it? All right, I will. I hope this won't affect our friendship. No, of course not. I'll work it out somehow. Good luck, Barry. Goodbye. Hiya, pal. Miss Greenwood, don't they sweep out the office in the morning anymore? Yes, but sometimes the janitor overlooks the newspaper man. <laughs> More paychecks for you to sign. Right up. Mr. Druin called you again. I was too busy, as usual. Yeah, teeming with activity. There's Dunlap now. Hello, Burbank. Hello, Major. from Dunlap? Just landed a minute ago. Hello, Gertie. Hello, Mr. Hello, Holden. Uncle Barry. Well, there's my sweetheart. Give me a kiss. I got something for you. What is it? Look here. Uh-oh, not until after dinner. You know, your S-P-O-I-L-I-N-G-H-E-R something awful. I know what you're saying. What? Peas for pig zap the fine cheese. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they can't fool you. Look who's coming. Kiss. Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> you bring me one too? You bet. Hello, Barry. Hello, Frank. How's the trip? Oh, not so bad. Lewis has the tough run. 
Be with you in a second, honey. Right. Hey, what are you looking for? Ken. Oh, you are. Lewis, number 42, calling ITL. Get out the bed. I'm dropping down. In, boys. <laughs> Hello, partner. <laughs> Fellas, there's something I'd like to talk over with you. Now, wait for me in the car, will you, honey? All right. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, boys. Goodbye, Goodbye honey. Dorothy. What I have to say concerns you fellows as much as it does me. We've struggled together for five years. We built a collection of crates into a recognized airline. Now we're faced with a problem. We've got to make a serious decision. I've just had a long talk with Holden about advancing his money for that new equipment. When do we back up the wagon and unload the dough? Holden flatly refused to advance us one cent until we landed that new contract. Now, this is the situation. Consolidated wants to buy us out. Now, do we want to sell and take a small profit for our years of hard work? Or do we want to stick it out and gamble on getting that new contract? What do you think about it, Barry? No, no. The decision rests with you fellas. Most of you have families. I'm alone. Anything you decide, Barry, is good enough for me. There's one thing to be remembered. If we fail, we'll be right back where we started. If we make it, there's no telling how far we can go. Well, we've listened to you from the start, Barry. Yes, we've done all right, too. So why not see just how far we can go? Thanks, fellas. I guess you know how good that sounds to me. We're right in line for big things. Let's fight this thing through to the finish. Wait! I want you to take me into town. How much do you charge for haunting a guy? Sorry, mister, my motor went dead. If you're in a hurry and give me a hand, we'll push you out of the drive. Okay, come on, Tony. Okay. Come on, Tiny. All right. Well, playing no work makes Jack a dull boy, you know. Uh, who's Jack? Thanks, mister. Sorry to hold you up. All right. Yeah, just charge it. We don't mind, do we? This huh? is going to take you very much longer, driver. I don't know, miss. My gas line is plugged up. Well, I do. Maybe you can get another cab. If you've got a schedule to make, lady, that's my middle name. Oh, this is rather unusual, isn't it? Well, I'm rather an unusual fellow. I assure you, it'll be quite all right. I do have to be at my head, this at five. Allow me. You've practically been there ten minutes. Pay the man, pay the man. How much is it? Dollar forty. Hey! Just right, thanks. Five minutes late. Thanks for a marvelous ride. I never knew hitchhiking had such possibilities. The possibilities have only just begun. In that case, it's your move, Mr. Barry Elden. Say, how'd you know my name? Mm, that's the price of being famous. Goodbye, Mr. Elden. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. I don't know your name. bag in my car. I knew that as a gentleman you'd return. And suppose I refuse to be a gentleman. In that case, we have to start all over again. <laughs> I'll return it on one condition. 
And that is? That you have supper with me somewhere when you finish here tonight. Well, I do want my bag. That's a smart girl you got there, Arnold. Yeah, well, I don't like using Renee. I'm particular about her. We ought to be particular about Eldon. Oh, I'd love to learn to fly. What makes you think so? I've heard so much about it lately. Well, who's interested in that sort of thing around here? Mr. Arnold. His office is full of maps and blueprints. <laughs> Looks more like an airport than a cafe office. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nothing like an interest in common to bring two people closer together. Red Ale fade out of the picture long enough to give me a chance to talk to him. Oh, don't worry about her. She knows what to do. I'm sorry, but I can't sit down. You see, I really do have to earn a living at... It's almost time for my next number. Don't forget our supper date. Shall we discuss that later? And let's discuss that later, too. Eldon, of all people, this is a surprise. Is it? You know, I've been trying to get in touch with you for several days. You don't say. You mind if I sit down for a Help few minutes? Yourself. Thanks. I wanted to talk to you about buying out ITL. Is that right? Well, Druin, all the money you could beg, borrow, or steal wouldn't buy ITL. It'd be a handsome profit in it for you, Eldon and an executive job in our organization. Is that the same line you have in my pilots? You've tried every way you know to break me. Now that we're on the edge of big things, you're trying to buy me out. Now, we've got an enormous investment in Consolidated Airways, and we're going to protect that investment. I'd advise you to sell. Thanks. Let's just call it a case of the survival of the fittest and let it go at that. You can't fight me, Eldon. You're not powerful enough. Why bother? Good night. Good night. On a night like this? Don't be silly. Who's this? The man I told you about, Mr. Shoulder, Mr. Drew. How do you do? Yeah. Well, come on, let's get it over with. I don't be nervous. Just wait, Jackie. Everything ready? Yeah, this time you shall see with your own eyes. Electric guys all over the joint. You can't take a breath without his knowing. And a man has been spied upon by the government of three countries. He can't afford to take chances. I don't like this business. You will, Mr. Drew. There's nothing to worry about. No one ever see you in this neck of the woods. How do you like my workshop? Very interesting. Yeah, you shall see how interesting. High frequency transmitter. He knows his business. I must build up a little thermionic energy. Watch the little drink. insulation or the, the covering of a wire. The electric charge travels to the center of this light ray and can no more escape 
with an electricity kind of scheme from a covered wire. Now, watch the play. But you will see what will happen when I turn on the electricity and send a charge to this light ray. It is just like touching something with a high tension wire. Money to build this in full scale, and I will destroy barracks, battleships, airplanes, anything. You see the possibility? But what makes you think I'd be interested? My business is flying planes, not destroying Your them. Your business is to protect the millions that you've got tied up and consolidated, right? Well, naturally, and if I... the independent airlines grab that mail contract, you and your company are about washed up. And you and I both know that they stand a good chance of landing. Well, I'm not exactly trembling in my boots about independent. If necessary, we're prepared to buy them out. Sure, but they won't sell. And you know it. Well, now oh, me... come on, Mr. Druin. Place your cards face up. You've offered that guy Eldon more than the company's worth. He won't even talk to you. The only way you can get him to sell is to force him to. But you can't force people in this day and age. Oh, no? A machine like that in full scale, a smash or two, headlines, government investigation? <laughs> You'll be able to buy them out at your own price. You think it over. Of course you realize, Mr. Arnold, if it seems expedient to use your plan as a last resort, I still must consult my associates. You mean the chief? What do you know about him? Enough. I've made it my business to find out about the chief. Just what would you expect to get out of this? Oh, the money necessary to construct the machine full scale. And a little something for its use. A little something? The person who buys my invention will control the skies. Yeah, but you uh, can't sell it. Why not? It's not your invention. You stole the plan. What I stole was imperfect. I alone saw the possibilities. It is mine, the product of my own brain. I perfected it. And while you were perfecting it, the inventor and three other people were killed. Yeah, but that was an accident. That's all right, I, I, Mr. Shooter. We understand each other perfectly. We'll discuss our plans later. You let me handle the business end of this deal. Listen to her purr. Isn't she a sweetheart? Isn't who a sweetheart? A ship, of course. Why are ships always called she? Because they're beautiful to look at, but plenty dangerous. You have to watch them every minute. Like women. They need lots of attention. Yeah, like women. They take you up in the skies, and then, without any warning, they let you down with a crash. But aren't most of the crashes caused at the men at the controls, trying to go too far or too fast? Ah, uh, you don't know anything about planes. And you don't know anything about women. Take the wheel. Go ahead, take it. Don't move it. Don't you? move it. No. We're falling. What? We're falling. You're telling me? <laughs> this ITL situation is getting more serious than we think. You know, they operate on a shoestring and can underbid us on any kind of a contract. Then there's Barry Eldon. He has friends, reputation, background. That all adds prestige to his organization. It's hard to beat that kind of a setup. Well, there must be some way of getting around it. There is. That machine I spoke about. Ellen couldn't trouble you if we didn't have planes to do it with. It's a long gamble, but if it works, it's the answer to our problem. How long will it take to build a full-scale model? Not long if he has the equipment. But that calls for a lot of money. You've used money before for experimental purposes? Have I ever questioned it? No. Then draw against the consolidated special account.
about time for that airplane. Yeah. Open the top doors. I get the telescope. Break all right. Come at a time like this. Oh, hello. Uh, where's the crash? Up in the canyon. Okay. Open the gate, will you? Our door's closed. Not to me, brother. I represent the power of the press. Well, there ain't nothing to see. What caused the crash? Did they find out? Don't know. The pilot ain't talking. I see. Well, uh, where's the nearest phone? There ain't a phone in 10 miles. Well, what about this Mountain View Inn? It's closed up. I am the caretaker. OK, sourpuss. Hiya, Marconi. How's your wavelength? You better keep the wisecracks off the air, or you'll be grounded. Oh, yeah? Here's your weather report. Sign it. Okay, Lewis. Come Aren't on. Are you going to read it? Don't need to. Oh, Major. What's the idea? Idea? What idea? Your ship's been waiting for you and you've been drinking. Oh, I only stopped for one or two. You know better than that, Lewis. Oh, what's the use, Barry? Ed's out there somewhere in the sky flying a ghost ship. Wait a minute. This is no time for sentiment. You're supposed to carry on where Burbank left off, and you can't do it by filling yourself full of liquor. Burbank was a swell kid. All right, Lewis. I'm going to take the ship up myself. Give me this stuff. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't do that to me. It's my run. I've never missed it. I won't let you down. The next time this happens, I'm going to ground you. Remember that. OK, Major. <laughs> Be a good mud now and stay home night. Go on. <laughs> OK, monkey, come on. ITL to Lewis. Go ahead. Lewis reporting. Hey, Tailspin's getting a little seasick. What do I do? My Tony! My Tony! 
Sorry. Something's wrong. Hello. Hello, Lewis. Lewis. Sheldon. Barry. Hello, Lewis. Hello, Lewis. What happened? Yell calling Lewis. He started kidding. I heard him scream, and then his radio went dead. Keep trying to raise him. ITL calling Lewis. ITL calling Lewis. Tailspin. Then what happened? All of a sudden, for no reason at all, my engine began to miss. I couldn't locate the trouble. The same thing that happened to Burbank. The plane burst into flames the minute I jumped. The newspapers are already hinting at inferior equipment. Why, they're nuts. What do they know about equipment? Bill, please be careful. <laughs> Pretty soft for you up here, with nothing to do but hang around with a lot of good-looking nurses. They're giving me a new one today. Stick around and get an eyeful. Oh, he's, he's faded. There's two Federmen from the Department of Commerce to see you. Send them in. Come in. Mr. Elvin? Yes. My name is Shelton. Mr. Shelton. Mr. Harrigan. Harrigan? Sit down. Thank you. We are anxious to find out why those two planes of yours burned. Why don't you read the newspapers? They seem to know all the answers. Yes. All but the right one. For the past two years, investigators in a half a dozen countries have been on the lookout for a man named Schulter. He stole the uncompleted plans of a very dangerous invention. What kind of an invention? A machine capable of destroying airplanes from a distance by some kind of electrical control. Schulter had made a number of experiments in Germany and later in Russia. Then he disappeared when things got too hot for him. You don't think there's any connection between Schulter and what happened to my ships? That's what we're trying to find out, Mr. Elvin. In the meantime, I must ask you to ground all your planes. Ground my planes? All the circumstances surrounding your crashes are similar to those linked with Schulter's experiments. And until we find out if there is a connection, your planes must stay on the ground. But do you know what that means? It means that we are asking you to cooperate with this department in every way possible. I understand that, but... Well... <laughs> Well, I'll do all I can. I'm more anxious than you are to get this thing cleared up. Good. And you will consider what we've told you uh, strictly confidential, of course. You can rely on me. Thank you. General ordered all our pilots to ground their planes at once. Ground all our... Of I tell you, this is no time to ask questions. ITL calling all pilots. Orders are to ground your ship at once. Acknowledge instructions. ITL off. Now, let's see. That accounts for number eight, landed at Banning. Yeah, number 11 at Deerfield. What about number five, Dunlap? I don't know. Must be something wrong with his radio. Keep trying to raise him. Dunlap, number five, calling ITL. Clear. Unlimited. 
Unlimited. Speed, 140. Must be something wrong with his receiving set. We can hear him, but he can't hear us. We've got to reach him and tell him to ground his plane. ITL to Dunlap. ITL to Dunlap. ITL to Dunlap. What's the matter? Has something happened to Frank? Uh, no. We're just trying to reach him to tell him to ground his plane at Ridgeport. Change of schedule. But isn't the change rather sudden? I thought How's that... the weather at ITL? Dunlap, number five calling. Dunlap, number five calling. How's the weather at ITL? What's the matter? I'm waiting for a report. But why doesn't he hear you? There must be something wrong with his receiving set. Don't worry. He'll be in a while. You're not going to keep my daddy for my birthday party, are you? He's bringing me a big surprise. ITL to Dunlap. Ground your plane at once, Dunlap. Ground your plane at once. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. ITL to Dunlap. ITL to Dunlap. Hello, Dunlap. Hello, Dunlap. Bail out. Come in here. You certainly put one over on me yesterday, didn't you? Huh? I had some crazy idea. I still ran the Tribune. So you do, Chiefy. So you do. Didn't I tell you to bear down on that guy, Eldon? Yeah. Every newspaper in this town got a beat on us in this trash investigation angle. They're all spreading it on thick. You know he's flying crates. Now listen, you write a story, you can make it hot. You caption it, crack up slade to inferior equipment. Go on, get to it. I won't write a story using that slant. Oh, you won't, eh? Say, who do you think you are anyway? That guy's press agent? If you're on his payroll, you can get off mine. And listen, you're gonna write what I tell you to write when I tell you to write. Hey, that or sounds I'm... like a song. Oh, why don't you set it to music? Write the right story at the right time. Now isn't that fine? I can get it to write. Get out of here. You're through. You mean I'm canned? You heard me. Get out. Listen, horse face. What? If you ever learn how to handle a newspaper, give me a ring. You... Just a moment, please. Oh, uh, Mrs. Sister, give us a break, will you? I gotta get a statement from Barry Eldon. Say, ain't he gonna answer the charges against the line? Yeah, what's going on in there? Listen, will you mug Scram? Just a college girl. Mm. If you'd only take my advice, Barry, you wouldn't be in the spot you're in right now. Those three crashes have torn down everything you built up. Papers are demanding a government investigation. They're crying wholesale murder due to inefficient organization and faulty equipment. They're calling your ships cracker boxes and flying coffins. Don't you think I know what they're saying and what I'm up against? But they're crazy. Ships don't crash without a reason, Barry. If it isn't the fault of the ships or the pilots, what is it? I don't know. It's like trying to fight when you're blindfolded. If I could only reach out and take hold of something. Oh, there, there, Barry. Mr. Druin, calling Mr. Eldon. Tell him I'm not in. Hold Mr. Druin on the line. Don't be a fool, Barry. If he's still making you an offer, grab it. Put him up. It's your only out, Barry. Hello? Oh, you, uh, you know what I'm calling about, Eldon. Well, naturally, we can't make you anywhere near the offer we made before. Now, let me tell you something. ITL is not in the market and never will be. Before this thing is over, you'll wish you'd never seen an airline. Think that over. Barry, have you lost your mind? No. I've still got an ace in the hole. Come on in here, you news hawks. Oh, well, wait, Barry. What are you going to do? All right. Well, Barry, what's your answer to this? Yeah, what about it? You boys wanted a story? Well, here it is. You know that new ship of mine out there? The speed job? That's right. 
But I'm going to supercharge it and make a cross-country run that'll smash every existing record. This is no time for circus stunts. Well, that's what I'm going to do. And if I fail to bring it in, you boys can write some more about ITL, our inefficient management and our faulty equipment. And our ships are called flying coffins because that's what I'm going to break the record in, a flying coffin. Hiya, pal. What do you want? Hey, it's a great idea, Barry, that cross-country hop. Best way in the world to restore confidence in the ITL. I restore it and you tear it down. That's a great idea, too. Sir, you don't think I wrote that stuff, do you? Oh, no, of course not. You're only the reporter. Well, wait a minute, Barry. I want to tell you my hunch about those three crashes. It's as good as your hunch is about ITL equipment. It must be swell. But you don't understand. Just a pal. Kick a friend when he's down just to get yourself a good headline. I tell you, I didn't write oh, that, John. Clear out. I'm wait a busy. minute, Barry. I want to tell you about my hunch. You and your hunches. Follow him yourself. You may get some more good headlines with that mudslinging scandal sheet of yours. All right, wise guy, I will. for pig, danced a fine jig. Q is for quail, dots on his tail. R is for rabbit. But you still didn't tell me, when's my daddy coming home? Well, he's flying a different route now, Dorothy. He won't be back for a while. How long? Oh, maybe a long time, honey. Why didn't he tell me he was going to do that? Well, he wanted me to tell you. Oh. R is for rabbit. Isn't he flying for you anymore? He'll always be flying with me. Then why don't you come see me? R is for rabbit, whose ears are quite long. I don't think I like you anymore for doing this to my daddy. Didn't mean it. That's good. I'd feel pretty badly if you turned me down, honey. I won't cross my heart. Next to my daddy, I love you best. That's the way I want you always to feel, honey. Just like I'm next to your daddy. Come, Dorothy. You mustn't bother, Mr. Eldon. She's no bother. Dorothy's my sweetheart. I want to thank you for everything you've done, Mr. Eldon. Ah, forget it. Look, Mommy, here's a poor dolly. Her hair's all burned, and one of her foots is gone. She's cold without any clothes on. Whose dolly is this? She's yours, dear. Really? Can I have her? Mm-hmm. Mommy, will you fix her all up for me? Yes, dear. And make her a new dress and a bonnet? Yes, darling. We'll make her a little cap and, and a brand new dress, and we'll keep her forever and ever. Goodbye, Uncle Bear, and thank you for the dolly. Goodbye, dear. Rock 
Once again. Everything's set? Yes, sir. We got her all gassed up. I'm going home and get some sleep. Keep two men on guard on that ship tonight. I'm going to take off first thing in the morning. Right. Larry! Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. What is it this time? Now, wait till I get my breath. I can hardly wait. Say, there's something screwy about that Mountain View joint. I was out there last night. I found a phone. And when I called the operator, I got her. Well, that's unusual. Yeah, but you don't understand. The last time I was out there, the caretaker told me there wasn't a phone in 10 miles. Hey, stop scribbling on that map. I was just about to make a phone call when somebody sneaked up behind me with a piece of lead pipe. And plop. When I woke up, it was morning. Well, what'd you expect for breaking into a house? A chocolate bar? Yeah, but listen, will you? The old geezer that socked me was the caretaker. He tried to keep me away from the place once before. If you don't mind. I wish I knew what it all adds up to. Last night made an old man out of me. Hey, what's this number? Huh? I don't know. Morning sign 1254. Wait a minute. I know where I got that. It was written on the wall alongside the phone out there. Say, might be a good idea to find out from headquarters who belongs to it. Why headquarters? I, I don't spoil anything. Hello. Did someone there phone the city pound? No, you must have the wrong number. Renee's voice. Arnold's Casino. Where are you going? Arnold's. What for? Trouble. Wait, I'm going with you. It's a good place to find trouble. When I knew I loved him dearly, I told him so. Just how much and how sincerely he never knows. Although my heart is with a man, I'm singing on. This is just another. See where Arnold ties into this picture. Neither do I, but I'm going to find out. Hello, Ronnie. Going my way, mister? As far as you'll let me. <laughs> you sit down? Mm -hmm. After I change. In the meantime, I leave you in good company. Me? I got it. You remember the day that Renee's cab stalled? What about it? It was a plant. As soon as you got out of sight, it drove away. There wasn't anything wrong with it. And so she's mixed up in it, too. Now's my chance. Watch the stairway. If it moves an inch, I'll tackle it. What do you have to say? Oh, just the usual things. Why? 
Looks kind of fishy to me. He's hanging around here tonight before a cross-country hop. Well, what would you like me to do? Take him home and tuck him into bed? You can stay away from him from now on. Thanks, teacher. Would you mind telling me why? I'll explain that later. Anybody in here a minute ago? I just threw a drunk out of here. A big guy in a gray suit? Yeah. Why, Barry? My mistake. I'm not going your way after all. What do you mean? That ought to be hard for a smart girl like you to figure out. Go out of my way. What's the matter, Barry? I've just begun to wake up, that's all. Oh, just a minute. You made a wrong move, Eldon, and I don't like it. All right, you don't like it. What is this all about? What were you doing in my office? I just went in the wrong door. You seem to have trouble finding a way around here. You come with me, I want to talk to you alone. If it's just the same to you, I'm leaving. Wait a minute. Selden's car. He hasn't left yet. Mm-hmm. Hello? Mr. Eldon, this is St. Luke's Hospital calling. Mr. Lewis has taken a decided turn for the worse. I thought you ought to know. Give him every attention. I'll be right over. Nice going, dear. Sorry, I have to go to the hospital. Mm, that's just where you would have landed if you had left here. Close those curtains, quickly. What for? Two of Arnold's men are out there, waiting for you. Close them. An escort, huh? This is Barry Eldon. Someone called me from there a few minutes ago about Lewis and 415. Why, no one called you from here, Mr. Eldon. He's doing nicely. He'll be out in the morning. I thought so. Well, what's the idea? What do you mean? I don't understand you. Now, let's get this straight. You're mixed up with Arnold in this deal, aren't you? Well, what deal? The other day when your taxi stalled. That was a plant to get me to Arnold's casino, wasn't it? Yes, that's true. Why? Mr. Arnold told me that Mr. Druin wanted to see you about some business matter. Arnold and Druin, eh? What are you doing here? I overheard Arnold's plan. And I was afraid of what might happen to you. How do I know that isn't just another one of your stores? I'm telling you the truth. You're at liberty to believe what you like. Wait a minute. What about you, if you're seen leaving here? Why should that concern you? You don't believe me anyway. Oh, Renee, I want to believe you. 
But if you're on the level with me, I can't let you step out of this building while Arnold's men are watching it. It might prove embarrassing. Come here. I'm going to show you something. Arnold's been spending large sums of money for electrical equipment that could never be used in a nightclub. You talk as though I might have something to do oh, with Renee, it. Renee, one of my flyers is lying injured in the hospital and two others have been murdered. Yeah. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this thing. It's just beginning to fit itself together. Druin has been trying to put me out of business. Barry, you surely can't believe that I... I don't want to. Forget it. I gotta get out of here. But why don't you call the police? The police and all their red tape would just hold me up right now. But Arnold's given me an idea. Give me the nearest emergency hospital. Spoke out of turn. Yeah. Now you understand what you're supposed to do. You can count on me. Morning, boys. Well, hello, Mr. Eldon. Where's the cray? Look, I'm in a jam. Will you fellas help me out? Sure, if you can. All right. Here's your patient. Hey, what's going on here? What, what is it? A killing? How do I know? I wasn't there. Oh, why weren't you? I think I'll take a peek. Hey, I'm a reporter. I want to know who... Everything's all right. All right, let's get going. Well... <laughs> Must have been some gal on the drunk. Some fun, eh, kid? Yeah. I tell you, Drone, I don't know how we got out. We had the place covered. <laughs> and he got away with enough evidence out of my office to hang the both of us if he only knows how to use it. Well, it's getting a little too hot for me, and I don't like it. Yeah. All right. Where have you been? Where did you disappear to? I've been up at Barry Eldon's apartment. You'd better explain that. I will. <laughs> you still don't understand women, Victor. Oh, Renee. I'm sorry. That's a swell piece of work. But I'm a little afraid of what might happen when he finds out. Now, don't you worry about Eldon making any more trouble. I'd feel safer, I was sure. Well, suppose we slip out of town for a few days until the whole thing blows over. That's a great idea. Canada, maybe. Why, sure. In your place. Of course. Mix yourself oh. a drink, dear. Hello. Get me Lloyd's Airport. Happy days, dear. Happy days. But you can't call it off now. Every newspaper in the country is carrying headlines about your shot at the record. Will you forget headlines right now? We've got work to do. Gee, Barry, everything's all set. You'll never have air conditions like they are this morning. We'd have an inside track on that mail contract if you made it, and it'll be handed out in a few days. There's some things more important than mail contracts. I know. You've got your orders? Yeah. Keep my change in plans dark as long as you can. Did you get in touch with Harrigan? Everything's all set. Come on, Danny. Now, no funny ideas of your own. That ship stays on the ground. OK, on. Major. Good luck. Good-looking job, ain't it, Tailspin? It's a darn shame. Well, there she is. Another few minutes, we'll be on our way. Took something like this to make up our minds. Are you happy? You know I am, or I wouldn't be with you. Ah, 
I told you I always get what I want. I never took this seriously before, Victor. <laughs> thing one guy could do for another. What's that? This is the ship Barry was going to take off from this morning for trying that record. She certainly looks like she could make it all right. She could if she had a pilot. Well, what about Barry? Oh, you know the jam we're in, Wiley. Barry's out now trying to square it. You know, it would mean an awful lot to us if one of our ships could crack that transcontinental record wide open today. I got orders not to take the ship off the ground. Full of gas and all primed and ready to go. Did you carry oxygen equipment? Mm-hmm. I got a couple of stratosphere suits out in the car. Mm-hmm. I suppose a fellow like myself should climb in the plane and fall asleep. I suppose a guy like Wiley Post came along and started fooling around with the controls and took off and climbed up about 35 or 40,000 feet and dropped into New York in about eight and a half hours. Oh, yes. When I woke up, it wouldn't be my fault, would it? Well, I should lay on. Oh, and that's swell. The old earphones and everything, eh? Yeah, okay. Tight, huh? What are you nervous about? It was your own idea to take the plane. What's the meaning of this? It means that you came in the wrong door this time, Arnold. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Come on. Give it to Papa. You guys always want to play so rough. Where's my pilot? Oh, he's hanging around. I thought I told you not to get in the ship. I was afraid of spoiling everything if I didn't. ITL to Barry Eldon. ITL to Barry Eldon. Eldon to ITL, go ahead. Eldon to ITL, go ahead. Wiley Post and Lewis just took off in your speed plane in an attempt to break the record. They moved out before we knew what was happening. They would do a fool thing like that. And I'll bet they make it. Tiny, get the chutes. Put yours on. This one's yours. Now, what's this all about? I'll explain in detail, Arnold. Point number one, we've got three chutes. One for each of us and none for you. Why? At the first sign of danger, we're going to bail out. Point number two, if you're interested, we're flying over ITL route number one. Point number three, this ship of yours is masquerading as an ITL plane. We're flying over the same route as my ship that's out to break the record. Sort of blazing the trail. I don't know what you're talking about, and you've got nothing to be worried about. If we get over this route without any trouble, I'll land you wherever you want to go, Arnold. Yeah, but it's dangerous. There have been accidents over these mountain routes. I have reason to believe they weren't accidents. You're talking riddles. Come, come quick. We make ready. Maybe you know something about a guy named Schulter. Schulter? I never heard of him. No? Then what happened to Burbank flying this route? And Lewis and Dunlap? What caused their ships to burn? How should I know what caused them to burn? Were you ever in a crash, Arnold? It's terrible. Suddenly something goes wrong. There's no chance to jump. Your ship begins to fall. The earth rushes toward you faster and faster. You know you're done for. Everything is still except for the moaning and whining of the wind and the wires, like a human being crying out in agony. 
Then the earth blots out everything. There's a crash, a splintering of wood, a wrenching of steel. But pray God you don't hear it. Pray you're dead before that first tongue of flame starts, before you hear the roar of ignited gasoline and see that mad white flame that leaps to burn you alive. But you can't do this to me. It's murder. You didn't think of that when you brought down my boys, did you? I'm not the only one this thing. If you think I'm going to burn alone, you're crazy. Turn back, Alvin. Turn back. There's that truck. What truck? There's a machine in there that'll put this plane on fire. Bail out! I'm going after that truck. Give her a hand there, Tiny. Okay. All right. Happy landing. Stop. All right, let go, Tiny. No! Save your hide, do as I tell you. Well, there's a bag under your seat, get it out. Post substituting for Barry Eldon with Bill Lewis as co-pilot just broke the cross-country record. We just got word of a news story behind this flight that'll be on every front page in an hour. I told you. I know it. Something's gone wrong. I'm gonna get out of here. Druin won't go as far as he thinks. Just a minute, Mr. Druin. What does this mean? You'll find out. Well, Barry, I've just heard the good news. My heartiest congratulations. Thanks. I knew you'd be pleased. After all you've done for ITL. Why, Barry, you know there's no one as interested in your success as I am. You'll be even more interested in what I've got to tell you, Holden. Schulter's dead. And Arnold's been talking his head off all afternoon. Arnold? Who's Arnold? What could he say that would interest me? There are a few gentlemen out there who can tell you that. Oh, boy. That makes things easier. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a storm. Hello, give me the desk, quick. Hello, horse face. Tiny Davis speaking. Nothing you can say can interest me at all. Uh, when? Say, that's great, you get down here and you... What do you mean you'll sell me the story for a thousand dollars? You're crazy. Who's crazy? You fired me off your tin horn sheet yourself. 
Why, you're drunk. Who fired you? I never heard of such a thing. Your paychecks are here waiting for you. You get two paychecks ready for Tiny Davis. Step up, quick. You get down here in a hurry. Well, I'll be a horse's neck. Now, wait till I tell you. After I knocked Donald down, I went after Droon and Holden. <laughs> I took care of them alone until Barry and the police got there. <laughs> well, what do you think of me now, baby? Oh. Hello, Tiny. Oh, I beg your pardon. Is Mr. Elton in? Why, yes, you're just in time. Ronnie! Congratulations, Barry. I just want you to know how happy I am. Thanks. How long are you going to be in Washington? Just long enough to sign the new mail contract. Not over a week. But it's going to be an awfully long week. Is it? It wouldn't seem so long if... Listen, you don't have to be anywhere today at 5 o'clock, do you? Why, no. How about riding with me as far as Washington, lady? <laughs> I never knew hitchhiking had such possibilities, Mr. Elder. <laughs> What's the idea? If I know anything about possibilities, you're going to need this. Mm -hmm. 